All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you are unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be posted to our archives for you to watch uh, later at your convenience. And I will show you at the end of today's show where you can um, access all of our recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries here in Nebraska, so similar to your state library. Uh, so we provide services um, and training consulting to all sorts of libraries in the state, so we will have shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, um, corrections, museums, archives, et cetera, et cetera. Really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries, uh, something that libraries are doing, uh, book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, could be anything. Oh, sorry. Sound just cut out. Hold on. Wait. Oh. What was that again? <laughs> sorry. Oh, yeah, I just noticed that my audio connection cut out for a minute there. All right. <laughs> Let's, that was me. It was us. Okay. All right. Let me try this again. We have with us today our guest speaker, Brooke Zarco. <laughs> Good morning, Brooke. <laughs> morning. I wonder if she was that again. And she is a library director in, um, in here in Nebraska, in Blair, Nebraska, at the Blair Public Library and Technology Center. Mm -hmm. And she's going to share with us uh, wonderful tales from the dark side of library management. Many of us, I'm sure, have experienced this. Um, if you haven't, good for you. <laughs> um, and I will just hand it over to you, Brooke, to take it away and tell us all what you've deal dealt with and how we can handle it ourselves. <laughs> sure. So, and just to check, you can see my screen, right? My slides. I Yes, yes, okay. I can see your slides. Yep, but your first slide is up there full screen, no problem. Okay, yeah. I just want to make sure before we get started. So um, my name is Brooks Arco and and I've I've not been in library management that that long, which is which is kind of ironic, I would argue. Um, I've been in libraries for over 10 years in different positions, um, and then I've been in library management for about the last four years. And I wanted to explain why I wanted to do this um, do this presentation. I, I did this pre presentation at NLA, and I, I wanted to do this presentation um, for other reasons because you know library management is one of those things that how to put this. It seems like a lot of people get thrown into, and they don't. You know, if if you're like me and you have and you have training and stuff, or you know you went to school for various courses, there's not a lot of courses that teach management. Um, I think my management education consisted of, I think there was one assignment I did about cutting people and managing a budget. And it was mostly focused on X plus Y equals Z in your salary. And if you have to get rid of someone, who do you get rid of? And on paper, that's really easy. But in practice, I mean, that was it for my education. They did not talk about what are the HR issues you're going to deal with? What do you do if you have, you know, bad management in place? There, I mean, there was nothing, there was nothing that was given to me or taught to me at any point in my time at, at school about managing people. Yeah, and I remember so, I, in library school when I was in library school, which was a, a long time ago. But um, mm -hmm. I have this memory of an ad, administrator class, administrative class, and all I remember from it was. Um, having to do a floor plan of how would you rearrange the library to be more like better flow and put things in it. But I'm like, that was fun, you know, little diagram with chairs and things. But as far as people, I don't remember a thing about that now. Yeah, I mean, that's that's something and it's not a, it's not an indictment of, of education or anything like that. It's just, it's hard to teach, it's hard to learn, it's hard to practice. It, it's it's kind of, it's one of those things where it's it's, 
how do you teach this? I mean, how do you talk about this without making people mad? <laughs> you know, you don't want to tell tales on your boss or anything like that. And so I am fortunate enough to have a essentially what I term a completely sanitized situation in which I'm able to talk about. I see I, if you're like me, you're part of a lot of groups that talk about library things. And I feel like lately, especially in the last couple of years, I've seen so many anonymous posts about bad work situations, bad bosses, and how do you handle that? And what do you do? And, you know, that's it's such a difficult situation to be in. And it's it's hard to give advice that fits. And it's if you're dealing with it, you don't know what to do. And I mean, at the time that I was dealing with a lot of this, I didn't even have groups to go to to like put that question to them. So it's kind of one of those things where it's like I had no resource. And I'm not saying this resource, and I do want to preface this by saying just because I'm giving this presentation doesn't mean I am like the best boss in the world. <laughs> this is not a humble brag or anything like that. It's just here's my experience with this. I hope it helps in some way. You know, ultimately, we're here to learn. We're here to to kind of share knowledge. I, you know, I would argue that's the whole point of this. <laughs> yeah, and and I'm sure it's you know it's a good a safe space here for people to share if they want to. Um, and I will mention, you know, as I said, there is a place for you to ask questions, put in comments. Uh, when I read those off, if everyone's ever watched the show, I unless in very rare cases, I never say, oh, so and so from so and so library said blah. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, anything you say here will be completely um, anonymous. Uh, yeah, and that's, like I said, I, I'm fortunate to have a sanitized situation, but I, I just feel like I see more and more people who are who are in bad work situations and they don't know what to do and everyone mm -hmm. feels like they're the one experiencing it. So I just wanted to talk about this and kind of, I, I think it's a conversation that needs to be had. Now, clearly there's not an epidemic, but there's there's bad managers out there. And, and there there is a conversation that needs to be had about how do you deal with this? And so with that, I'll kick off. Um, so <laughs> I was doing this in a in like a video game theme. So, you know, mm -hmm. boss level one. <laughs> and yeah. then we'll have the final boss at the end. So I was kind of thinking in that regard. So my my first bad boss is what I would call a micromanager. So to kind of set the stage here, I came in as a part-time circulation assistant was what I was called. I was working on my MLS. I was getting my education. So this seemed like a good way to, you know, be still be practicing as a librarian and then working on my MLS. So my CERC supervisor at the time was basically, I mean, you think micromanager and it's kind of like, Oh yeah, no, I've had people do that. This was to a T. I mean, they this person managed essentially managed two full time people and four to six part times, depending on uh, the number of hires. You know, as hiring ebbs and flows. This was such a bad situation. I, I was kind of joking. I I looked up traits of a bad micromanager, and and this individual checked all those boxes, and I thought, oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's pretty bad when I was looking up this uh, working on this presentation this was this was honestly an environment of fear you know I, I put micromanager in and that's kind of a light way of putting it this was really an environment of fear that this person managed um, the other thing they do is, and so when you have someone who's in control of a, an environment like that they are gonna isolate you from the library at large and so I put in that third point, they they undercut other departments in the library with gossip. I mean, there was several times I can recall that any other department in the library that was not this person's department, I mean, they their workers were not doing their job or were, you know, I mean, taking too many coffee breaks or they just were incompetent and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And essentially what was happening is we were being isolated from a, the library at large. We as CERC assistants, were essentially isolated in that we you know we were built in an environment of mistrust of other departments mistrust of you know anyone in not anyone in management but this individual this was an interesting individual this person i saw them i think i worked i worked in this position for about it was about a year and three quarters i saw this person yelling at another manager and what I did not realize at the time 
was that other manager was this person's boss. This person yelled at their boss and nothing was done about that. I mean, so for me to think, oh, I can, you know, if I have a problem with this person, I can go to that person's boss. This, this was not the case. This person straight yelled at their boss in front of other staff members. I, so it's one of those things where you're like, oh my gosh, what have I walked into? So, you know, there's there's aspects of that where it was so difficult. And with this, I mean, there was there was things like in this environment where we weren't allowed to answer the phones. And basically, you know, this person was the only person to answer the phone. We were not to touch the phone unless that person, even if that person was in the bathroom, we kind of had to hold out for like the third ring. And if the third ring would come and they hadn't gotten out of the bathroom yet, then we could answer. But I mean, it was, you were absolutely not to touch the phone. You had to sit at the desk. And this is, some people do this. We had to sit at the circulation desk and do nothing. I mean, we were supposed to stare out and just wait for people to come in. It was, it was not a good environment. I mean, it was, this was micromanager to a T. So with that, I put on here, you know, part-time staff, myself included, even though I was working on my MLS, even though I'd been in libraries for years on top of this, we were not to, I mean, we weren't just not trusted for anything. Hmm. So there were preferable tasks that you could be doing and, those were, I mean, this person had their favorites. And so if it was a preferable task, that went to, that went to this person's favorite. You know, we were considered incompetent, essentially. We were just not to be trusted. We couldn't, we could not, no decisions could be made. The other thing is we did have in this environment, there was harassing behavior. This person tormented a fellow staff member. Um, it, it was bad. I mean, this person was all the time. I mean, it was probably a couple times a week that this person got yelled at. They were yelled at in front of us. And it was essentially kind of like a back away <laughs> situation, which is bad. But, you, you know, with when you're in this environment, you don't want to draw attention to yourself because mm -hmm. you don't then want to be the target of harassment, it, which is sad. It is upsetting. Um, so not only was this this manager harassing focused in on another staff member to harass all the time constantly this was also coupled with there was several race related remarks made um made at that in that area around i mean around me in front of other people and it was it was completely inappropriate so you know i'm kind of internally as i'm getting my internally as i'm thinking i'm getting my degree i'm like okay this need you know this needs to be reported <laughs> <laughs> and the the problem with that is is you know I, I got up my gumption I I so I'd gotten I'd gotten promoted to children's librarian and I'll talk about that a little bit more later but I'd gotten promoted and I thought okay I got up my gumption I went to this person's supervisor I was like I'm gonna I'm gonna do something about this and I reported it and it was brushed off it was, it was excused, it was brushed off, it was ignored. Um, that, that was really disheartening, you know, cause I had, it took a lot for me to kind of get up my gumption to go against this person because this person had a lot of connections and management and amongst the staff. And, but I, I was like, you know, I'm gonna do right, I'm gonna do right. And it just, it went nowhere. It was brushed off, the race related remarks were brushed off, the harassing be behavior was brushed off. It was just not, just ignored or excused or whatever and, and that was really that was really hard to do and i mean it was so here's a perfect example so you'll notice i have a i have a crane on there so this person <laughs> so we i was sitting you know we sit at the front desk we're not supposed to do anything touch anything etc okay fine we're only there to serve the patients okay so one evening or i think it was an afternoon i I know how to fold a paper crane. So I sat there and I took a piece of scrap paper and I folded a paper crane out of scrap paper. Well, there was an empty drawer in the desk and I had I had set it in there and I, you know, just, it was cute. I folded it and I just kind of had something to look at up at the desk and I'd folded it out of scrap paper. Well, at one point, the director somehow saw those and, and another, I think I'd showed my coworkers because they just thought it was cute. So I showed my coworkers my little folded cranes and 
and we had it in the desk and somehow the director at the time saw those and it then turned into a witch hunt and i, I wish i was joking about this i i really do and it turned into a witch hunt for who had who had folded the cranes and i think the way my schedule was is i worked a week on and a week off and and this had, they had found them right as my week off had started and they pulled in every single circ assistant to find out who had misused the scrap paper <laughs> and wow. it was i was like is this really a good use of your time <laughs> I shouldn't say that, but I mean, it was it was one of those things where I just thought, really, really, and then and then the order came down. You know, they pulled in all the staff members and they questioned them, and were like, who, you know, who folded this? And the funny thing is, is no one gave me up, <laughs> um, which I guess speaks to the solidarity of us, mm -hmm. which is, you know, from a manager's point of view, that's both good and bad. Um, you know, I was glad my coworkers were looking out for me. And, and you do want that in a staff, you know, you want your coworkers to look out for each other in a situation. But ultimately as a manager, I look back on that and I do think this was such a bad situation and we were so mistrustful of our manager. Yes, what would have happened if I'd been doing something else, something less fun, something more serious? They wouldn't have, they probably wouldn't have given me up to this person because we were so, I mean, she was, this person was so reviled that it was like, we're not telling you anything about our fellow people, you know? <laughs> no matter what it is they do. The the ban, yeah, and the ban came down, you were not allowed to touch scrap paper for anyone but a patron. <laughs> I was like, okay, this is uh, excessive. <laughs> so, I mean, that was, it was, it was just everything cranked up to 11 you know and i wish i could joke about that i told that story to someone and they kind of looked at me and said are you serious and i said yes yes i am i mean the ban came down you do not touch scrap paper unless it's for for a patron so you know that's so i mentioned this earlier about solidarity you know the the team did look at it for each other and that is a good thing you do want coworkers sharing and you know working together but there's things like we would i call it institutional knowledge we would pass down you know, they'd hire someone and we'd immediately pull them in mm -hmm. and kind of be like, okay, here's the things like, don't tick off this person, don't do these things, you know, this and that. So we would pass on our, our knowledge to the new person to keep them out of trouble. Um, so there was things like, and, and this is a real story. This is what, you know, we would tell people as a group, we would tell people that you had to be careful about finding messes because if you found a mess, the CERC supervisor would force you to clean it up. Even though we had a maintenance staff who was on call, the, the CERC supervisor would force you to clean things up, even though we had maintenance staff who would do it, no problem. But we would tell people, you're like, careful of finding a mess. They'll force you to clean it up and you gotta be careful of that. And it was just those things like that. And that's not great, you know, for looking back from that, that's not great. You don't want that. but you know, in, in this in this case, there were so much problems with this that we weren't doing more work. We would only do the work that we were assigned. Mm -hmm. Why would we do more work? That that could you could get in trouble for that. I'm not kidding. If you were trying to be proactive and find more things, it, there was a real chance of being in trouble if you acted without this person's knowledge. So, you know, it it's ineffective for us. We have we had no authority to make decisions. We'd have to take notes on the weekends and pass them up and everything. I mean, we had no we had no liberty to make decisions or solve problems. It it just created this huge backlog of stuff that had to wait till this person came back. I, I mean, it's just it's not a great situation, and and you don't want that kind of situation. It's a bad deal, and obviously it's a bad boss. So I mean, that was kind of that situation and there's just so much with that it's just not great mm -hmm. so these kind of things reflect i mean your your people using your library will notice this too that how things are at the library it's it's not just it's not just internal i mean yes people don't understand yeah yeah and people were scared i mean patrons were scared of the circ supervisor i mean they'd come in and it, it drove a lot of people off. Mm -hmm. This person had favorites and they would get preferential treatment. It, it just, 
it was bad. The patrons picked up on it. Everything, I mean, they would get mad at CERC staff because everything had to go through this person and we were allowed to make no decisions. It, it just wasn't great. But how does this person who has all these things, who has harassment, who has the racial comments, who has this, this bad behavior, how does this person exist? Well, unfortunately, it takes two to tango. Mm -hmm. So this is part of a chain here. What you're seeing is a chain. And that chain enabled this behavior at multiple levels. So moving on to level two. <laughs> so why, why did that person, why was that person able to thrive? Well, because that person's immediate supervisor was also ineffective. This was an ineffective boss. They were afraid of confrontation. They would not handle problems. They wanted to sit at their desk. They wanted to do stuff at their computer. And then that was it. And again, this kind of goes back to we as librarians are not typically taught to lead, to, to work in a team, to manage HR, to do things like that. We're, we're not taught that. It's And I understand it's hard to teach, but this, this ineffective supervisor, like I said earlier, they were yelled at by their immediate report in, in the public, in front of other staff members. That to, is stunning to me that that it, would. It is. I mean, this person, the CERC supervisor, was calling this person, telling them that they were stupid, that they had made all these mistakes, et cetera, et cetera. And I mean, the CERC supervisor undercut their immediate, their immediate supervisor. They undercut them to us. We were not to trust the CERC supervisor's boss. That person was not capable. They were only good for approving timesheets. We are not supposed to trust them. So again, we were this isolated group. We had been isolated. We had been, you know, taught to not trust anyone. And if it was a you're, classic abuse situation. Yeah, I mean, we were being held hostage essentially. And the CERC supervisor made sure that we had no one to go to. Because if the CERC supervisor's immediate boss is being yelled at by them, being told, you know, we're being told they're not capable and we we feel like that's the case. How do we go to that person? We, we can't, we don't trust them. Why would we? You know, they're not in the mud with us. So again, it's it's like I said, this person was just ineffective. But the thing is, is, you know, like I said, there's a chain here. If you went up the chain, the CERC supervisor reported to the, it was the adult circulation librarian at the time and the adult circula circulation librarian reported the director. Well, the director at the time, trusted and placed the CERC supervisor over everyone else. Mm -hmm. They would go out for lunch for things. The CERC supervisor knew the director's parents. Ah, there you go. Yep, yep. So knew, knew their parents and, the, you know, things like that. And so there, there was more at play there. And it was it was very disheartening for us. I mean, it was it was just, it was hard. So the ineffective supervisor, they were just, like I said, I went, I got up all my things, I got up to report, and that was all brushed off. You know, I I thought I would just really patted myself on the back when I went in there to report it. I really did. And it was just, it was all brushed off. It was all dismissed. The harassing behavior, but again, I guess in reality, if you're being harassed, can you recognize harassing behavior of others? Who knows? I mean, I, I couldn't say. And so I don't know if, you know, that was part of it, but this person, the ineffective supervisor did not want to engage with, with that person. And then my, I call, I call the director at the time, a consummate professional. They wanted to sit in their office and just have things run. You know, they wanted, they expected everything to run. They didn't want to hear about problems. They didn't want to have to step out and solve anything. So, you know, a lot of bad behavior by employees was slipping by. I mean, like I said, we were, you know, we as CERC staff were not reporting things. We were not doing ex more work than we needed to. Mm -hmm. This this ineffective supervisor was essentially allowing the CERC supervisor to just run rampant. I mean, that is that is not a good situation. It's it's bad and it's just bad service all the way from top to bottom. And I think our patrons could sense that because basically they wanted to come in, check out books and leave. And if there was a problem with their card or with their materials, that was like, well, I'm not engaging with any of that. Bye library, bye forever. 
know? <laughs> and that's sad because it's it's one of those things where your patrons are leaving, your patrons are not they're not happy with their library, they don't feel heard, you know. It's it's just a it's a bad situation and this was just a bad chain of management. And our, you know, this creates so many toxic situations and and like I said, you know, we're we're wrapped up in this abusive behavior, we're not recognizing perhaps and but who do we go to you know again we're seeing these problems but the the our immediate our technically the circ supervisor's boss is complicit the director is complicit we have nowhere to go and we as part-timers also you know we don't understand the capacity in which a library board governs this was a governing board situation we don't understand That's that. Something I was thinking of. I'm wondering if you were going to mention that. What about the, the in a public library, the library board? We as part timers don't understand how that works. Mm. I mean, I re realistically, you know, we're kind of just there to come in, clock in, clock out, and and kind of just bear the burden of of all this. We don't understand that we can go up and you know go to the board or and we had an HR person at the time, but again, you're kind of not seeing you're not seeing any avenue to which to deal with this. And if, if it's all the way up, what's the point in trying to go to HR? You know, we just, we oh. didn't, we didn't see a purpose. We didn't understand how that governing board functioned. And, you know, it, it's hard. I mean, we were part-timers. What did we know? Yeah. We did not, we did not feel like we could do anything with this. It was just kind of a bear it look out for each other so we had a really tight knit tight knit circ team and we protected each other but that was really all we could take care of at the time and it's you know it, it is depressing it's it's a bad situation and it's you know what what is a good solution to that and, well, and right if it, it, i think a lot of it um you just mentioned being part-timer that i think is a key too to this when you have people who are not full-time so they are not Oh, yeah, they just don't spend as much time there, so they don't know what are the ins and outs. It's just a part-time job. I don't know everything that goes on here because I'm not here often enough. You know, I'm not here, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week, or, you know, whatever the schedule is. Like you said, you work every other week. I mean, yeah. yeah that's and I don't, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not sat down and, and explain to you how the library governing functions, you mm -hmm. know. I, I, like I said, I was working on my library degree, but I was the only one in that pool of circ assistants and the circ supervisor who had any kind of any kind of educational background in libraries um, and i'd been in a lot of libraries but not in a capacity to know how to deal with the board so at the time even i was kind of like well you know just grin and bear it and and there was no hey guys like if you have a complaint like here's our hr person and this is the complaint process i mean none of that was talked about ever why would it be because that just creates that creates an opportunity to file a complaint <laughs> <laughs> and it just it just didn't happen so i mean this this was not a good situation this was a bad situation and but it gets worse is what's even sadder <laughs> um so so mm -hmm. one thing to be learned from this to take from this is you know ultimately you you have to be amongst your staff you need to at least be on a talking basis with them i mean we were you know favoritism was rampant and again like i said there was these these connections at play that were allowing leverage amongst amongst people that was probably not appropriate ultimately me looking at that situation to myself i said you know this may be a cut and run situation i mean this is, seems to be a top to bottom problem mm -hmm. and you know if i see that chain i say oh i'm out of here i you know i'm not i'm not dealing with this you know i have other places to go and some people have that luxury and others don't right you may be in a situation where you have to stay at that job and be in that job i you know and and if 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 we had felt like maybe we could have gone to our managers the different managers at the time maybe we could have pulled them aside or talked to them or made some kind of in way to to speak with them in a private manner but you know the director never comes out to talk to us the director comes out to talk to the supervisor he flips around and goes back and that's it i mean we don't ever see we don't ever see the circ supervisor's boss they don't come and talk to us i mean nobody talks to us nobody you know nobody wants to know it's all the circ supervisor is supposed to filter all that garbage out 
And so we have no, again, this goes back to we're isolated. We have no avenue to, to do anything with this. But like I said, this situation, it seemed like a top to bottom issue. And unfortunately that, that was the case at the time. But it gets worse. <laughs> Doubling up. Yeah, yeah, and and this is this is the worst of the worst. So here I am. This is not a picture of me, but this is me. I'm bright and shiny. I've just got my degree. I'm ready. I'm ready to be a librarian. So I, I interview at this library, and I and I get I get to be the children's librarian. So this is me starting up. I'm head of one department, a little department, you know, staff of three. I have one full time person and two part time people. So you know, I'm just I'm just this is a good starting point. It's a small staff. We work really closely together. Things like that. I'm happy. And then <laughs> again, that's that is that is me in despair. Um, at the time of my departure, I had somehow acquired four different departments. I had a staff of 14, and I was the only management level person standing, left standing in the building, excluding the director. I was the only manager left after, after my tenure. Um, my, and my departments, if I tell you my departments, it will make no sense to you because I had just been, this has all been piecemealed together. Uh, I had, I was in charge of maintenance, the Spanish language department or the multilingual department, uh, children's librarian, children's and teen librarian. And then despite not being an adult circulation librarian, I was in charge of the circulation desk, which primarily served the adult collection department. So mm -hmm. <laughs> I had somehow acquired all these departments and it was as people were ticked off, you know, I, I somehow started acquiring things and it was not not an occasion for joy. <laughs> so all of the other managers just left or had left? Uh, no, they were fired. Oh, okay. Um, well, okay. I sat in, I think I counted it up. It was somewhere between five and seven firings I sat in on. Um, and and most of the managers ended up being fired for one reason or the other. Was it legitimate? I'm not sure. I could I mean, you know. From the perspective, perhaps there was some of it, but so basically it turned into a dumpster. Library fire. is the first thing when you when you were a circ assistant. It's a different library. This is the same library. Oh, this wow. is how bad it got. Because <laughs> you know a new director comes in, and I thought, okay, things are going to change. Things could you know, change. All this yeah. stuff is going to all this stuff is going to get sorted out. The new director is going to come in and break the chain, and it's going to be great. And I was the children's librarian, and I thought, okay, you know. Let's go to work. And this, this was not great. Um, so this boss presented themselves as a compassionate boss. Oh, I'm here to fix the problems. I'm gonna listen to you guys. I'm gonna do all this, you know. And so we thought, oh, great, a breath of fresh air. It's it's gonna be a new era, a new era. And sadly, this was the worst of them all. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, this is this person's first director position and on paper everything was great they'd had they'd worked in libraries for a couple years they had a library i think they had a you know had education in libraries etc problems started after about six months um so like i said there's this disconnect amongst the bosses so so the boss tries to start working on this great fine you know i'm all behind that well this is kind of what sent this person into a tailspin. The HR business manager was caught stealing amongst other fraudulent activities. Uh, they were, I mean, and there's things like they were writing checks to themselves. They were fudging the vacation hours that they had, giving themselves more time. Um, they were billing stuff to the company credit card. Um, they, I mean, there's something, let's see, this person went to a stay at an HR conference and bought Cirque du Soleil tickets. <laughs> with oh. the company credit card uh yes, that makes sense pretty, pretty gutsy moves you know it's like oh this is this person is pretty gutsy um i mean who knows there there was no who knows what they ended up how much money it took from the library so hr was suspended and then fired and and that kind of tipped this person over the edge unfortunately i i think the amount of stress and the combination of the situation tip this person into being a bad boss they they had good intentions when they started and i really want to be clear about that they had the best of intentions when they started and then it just 
it, it spiraled out of control. So in a period of about nine months, there were six people fired and one person demoted. Um, and, and a lot of that was managers. I started out, let's see, I had started out, I was a children's librarian, so I was considered a manager at the time. Um, and I was part of several other managers and it was just like watching them fall. I mean, tick, 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 and there they went. So, and, and to add to this stress, so not only has this person caught somebody, you know, embezzling, and then it kind of turns into a whole bad situation. The library was undergoing a renovation project, like right as this person was caught embezzling. The library is getting ready to start a renovation project. So, and, and that's a whole nother level of stress. So at the time, the director says, I can't deal with all these managers reporting to me because there was, I think, six to eight people direct reports to this person. And so they restructured and there's three managers, uh, myself included, and the IT guy, and then that the director. Well, basically, I watched everyone else get fired around me. And, and I sat in on them. And that's what was bad. I mean, it was it was kind of like, why, why am I here? <laughs> I'm the children's library and I, I shouldn't be in here, <laughs> you know? But it was one of those things, I think it it just started. So one, you know, one person got fired and what would happen is this person would get it in their mind that somehow, somehow another person was undercutting them or doing things wrong and it was, I don't want to say paranoia, but it was just one of those situations where someone got the 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 bad eye, and then that person was in for it, and they were they were hunted down until they had enough to fire them, you know. And this was it it was bad. And as people got fired, as stuff got restructured, I started acquiring departments because there was nowhere else to go with them. They there was nobody else to assign them to. It was just me, you know, and so eventually it was down to me and the demotion was supposed to be the other manager, but the other manager was somehow, this person was the ineffective supervisor and they ended up getting demoted and another person who, and again, this is kind of bad, bad practices all around, this person that they promoted to be my co-manager uh, was someone they knew it was a friend it was a son of a friend and that's that's not how you hire <laughs> no that's that's a red flag all over the place all over that yes and honestly this poor person i you know was this person a bad person probably not but this person was probably set up to fail they were they were very quickly i think they within a month or two of them starting they were promoted to manager of I think two two departments, and then they were just basically set up to fail because then stuff started going wrong because this person had no experience. They they were they were kind of I won't say mismanaging, but they were not good at it and they did not have experience doing it. And so they were kind of things were being mismanaged, and the director took after this person and eventually ended up having to fire this person because they'd done some stuff. They'd kind of miss, miss, they'd fudged with timesheets, which is a big no-no. <laughs> they'd kind of fudge some timesheets. And the funny thing is, is they had fudged the timesheets under indirect pressure from the director at the time, from the director, because there was some stuff with timesheets and clocking in and out. And so they had fudged timesheets as a result of the pressure they were under from the director to make sure time in and time out was correct. And so that was kind of like strike, you know, strike one or two. And then there were some other things and, and basically they were set up to fail and they ended up being firing as well. So ultimately it was me, the management team consisted of me and the IT guy under the director. And, and this is, this is where it gets, it, and it gets worse. It gets worse. Um, oh, you know, fun fact, Ingram will cut you off. From books if you do not pay for I think it was six months <laughs> Ingram will stop sending you stuff and we no found that guys there I would think <laughs> <laughs> right so so this person because the HR business manager had you know been fired um, then they had been fudging stuff this person 
basically could not function with bills. They, they, they could not handle the bills coming in. They could not, you know, in a timely manner, get things out. They could not pay for things. They were so paranoid. We went without new items in the library for, I think it was six months. Mm. No new items, absolutely nothing. And there were complaints from patrons or complaints from staff. Somebody wrote a letter to the board, which got put in a, like, you know, we had like a little feedback box and got put in a feedback box. And the letter was to the board and the director read it and said, well, they don't know what they're talking about and threw it away. Things were, I mean, on the surface, everything looks fine and dandy, but there are these severe issues you're having I mean, what library doesn't have new items for six months because they weren't paying their bills? I mean, that that's just crazy. And But it, it was happening. So again, so the director decided they were gonna assume the, the human resources job. So like I said, they overanalyzed this. They, they were entrapping people. And that's how all these managers got driven out is they were entrapping people. And where do you go to report this? Your HR person is your boss. You know, so that that second yeah, department manager conflict I mentioned, there, conflict of interest there. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's the thing is is they thought it would be fine. They thought, oh, I can assume that, you know, no big deal. It's not, it's not going to be a problem. But when you have all these people getting fired, where do you go with that? I mean, when you're seeing these people being driven out, when you're seeing this laser focus again, where do you go to that? So again, I mentioned that second department manager. So they were promoted, and then about seven months later, they ended up fired. And so and that was when it got down to me and the IT guy. And then COVID happened. Oh. And so it, it gets, I mean, COVID just put the pressure on everything. And I know, you know, COVID was a time when some people rose to the occasion and did great things and, and others did not. Um, the week we shut down, the boss was gone that week. Uh, they were, they lived where they lived. They lived six hours away from the library. Their husband was employed six hours away from the library and they were there buying a house that week. So they weren't even living in this community in which they're the library director, they live six hours away. So the boss was over buying a house that week. So we, we get shut down. So boss says shut down. And then we don't hear from the boss for days. And if you remember this time, it was really scary. And oh, it was, it was scary. nobody knew what to do, everything. Yes, it was chaos and yeah, it was chaos. Librarians were scared. I mean, how's the virus spreading? We're touching things. You know, books are coming back, patrons are coming in. So, so we shut down. We don't. We shut down on Sunday, and we're just told to go to work. Don't don't serve patrons. We're going to close the doors. Just go to work, do shifts. Da 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 da. That's what we're told. Well, as the fear intensifies, so the staff kind of ramp up. So staff were obviously concerned, scared. I, I as the only manager in the building, am hearing this, and I say, okay, okay, we're gonna put together a letter, guys. You know, I said, I, I hear this, so let's have a meeting. So we gathered up, and we said, okay, let's let's report concerns. What are the concerns we want to? You know, the board at this time is deciding what to do about COVID, and and we'd like to to have some input on this. Reasonable. Mm -hmm. Um, so we put together a letter and I sent it to the director and say, Hey director, you know, um, we had a meeting today and we just wanted to pass along our concerns about, you know, COVID and what, you know, where our suggestions for how the board should act. I get in a lot of trouble for that. I get in a lot of trouble for that. Um, the, the boss came back at one point threw the letter on the table and said, where did this come from? And I got I got in a lot of trouble. And after that, after I sent that letter, I, I was I was on the hit list. <laughs> so I mean, it, it was a it was a bad deal. It was it was bad. And we were in the process of gathering documentation because this this was again like I said, we have all these abuses going on. We have all these problems. These bills not being paid. These things happening. The IT guy and myself were as the only managers who were aware of the full scope of this we were gathering documentation we were getting ready to go to the board you know and and we we were trying to be nice and unfortunately that's what killed us and we failed i'll, I'll say it we did not do the right thing in the situation 
we we were gathering all this documentation we were kind of you know getting things together the director's only the director's parent died and we were trying to be sympathetic and so we held off mm -hmm. and and the director was gone and bills were piling up and things was happening and the director really never came back after i mean they they were back but they weren't mentally back and mm -hmm. and what happened is my co my my coworker got cornered and it got thrown out that we were looking at going to the board or it, it got out that we were looking at going to the board mm -hmm. the director went to the board and undercut me and said that person's looking to get my job and they're going to come in here and tell tales mm -hmm. and so the blame was shifted and, and all the things that had gone wrong i had somehow hand to hand had a hand in and and whatever so what should we have done like i said we, we failed we failed mm -hmm. this person did end up so when we were prepared to go to the the board we were getting ready to go to the board probably would have been in you know early early that year and then you know like i said the the boss's parent died and then COVID hit and so but we're still documenting and then and then like I said I get I get undercut to the board to the degree that I know that none of them will believe me I mean it, it was bad I things were said and I am just like okay but what should we have done the second we had the second we had even some of the things a quarter of the stuff that we had we should have immediately gone to the board I mean we should not have waited we, we were trying to be nice and, and waiting is what got us. So the library board president was not objective and they, they believed the word of the director. And I knew that if I went to the board, I would be seen as going after that person's job. I just wanna, I just wanna push them out for the glory, <laughs> for the <laughs> glory of that job. And, and that, you know, I, our joke at the time was we're keeping the place together with scotch tape, and a toothpick. I mean, we're 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 the the little little Dutch boy at the dam. We had our mm -hmm. fingers in the hole. I mean, that that was us. That was our daily credo for for keeping things together because we were at the time with with no director. We were trying to run things and get stuff done and take care take care of bills. And when things needed to be called and done, we were taking care of it. But we were the little Dutch boys in the dam, and 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 we failed. We did. So you know and. and there's worse stuff that this person did. I, I won't get into all of it. I mean, there was definitely, there was some racist, I mean, racist comments and, and things like that. And in the harassing, the harassing shifted to me and I had documentation of this person, of my director at the time's harassing behavior towards me. And so, you know, when it, when push had come to shove, I was ready for that if it, if it came to it. So what ha ended up happening in this, this director, uh, came into inheritance of a sizable estate they're actually no longer a librarian so they came into the inheritance of a sizable estate and they got out of libraries and so kind of just it, you know it was like a deflated balloon but you know what do you take from that i mean this this was high you know high pressure situation i'd been in for a couple of years now and it was kind of like ah so you know transparency when possible it, it's so important i, I think that's there was this huge disconnect and again it was between the leadership and the and the people with the boots on the ground there, there needed to be some transparency hey guys i'm not buying new items because i'm trying to get you know trying to get things squared away after after the hr business person i mean even that would have been enough but really what should have happened absolutely was how do you handle a complaint what is the procedure nobody knew that i mean when when your director is the hr how, where does that go you know honestly it should have been made out like hey if you have a problem with the director you need to go to the library board president you know they'll hear you issues hear your issues and things like that you know and and with that with that procedure you need to know what is an issue and i think it's you have to be brave enough as a manager as a leader of any sort to empower your staff to say and tell if i'm doing something shady hr you know go to hr or go to whoever and this is where you need to go and ultimately it's you have to get on top of issues before they become full-scale problems so much of this stuff could have been headed off if, if this person had not just sat in paralyzation of doing anything and i know they were under a lot of stress and i do i do give them that 
ultimately, do I think this person was a bad person? No, I think I think power got the better of them and, and kind of went to their heads and they were un, and just reacted poorly. So, you know, in hearing this, you're thinking, oh, Brooke was on the bandwagon. Well, yes and no. Um, you know, I'll, I'll admit when you're in a position where you could be fired, because I watched all my co-managers get fired. So why was I not on the on the hit list for, for quite a while? Hmm. I probably was on the bandwagon. You know, I, I was just trying to do my job. And honestly, internally, I was like, please leave me alone. Please stop dragging me into these HR things. I just want to be the children's librarian. Children's librarians have fun. <laughs> <laughs> but but was I, I mean, I was probably, I was probably essentially kind of on the bandwagon. I was just trying to do my job. And, and all I could offer this person when they would ask my opinion was, this is how I would do my, you know, this is how I would do it. But, you know, and my staff, I think my staff, I kept them from the worst of it for good or for bad. Um, my staff knew that I had worked my way up. My staff knew I had done all their jobs. So, and so they could trust me to, to come in and take care of things. And so in that, I was taking care of my departments. And so for the good or the bad, I had shielded them from a lot of the issues. And I had probably preserved the reputation of my boss I don't know if it was to my detriment or not. So, and I, who knows, you know, ultimately what's the answer. So I, I want to end, I've got, I've got something here. It says the most expensive shelver. So in library school, I heard something and it, it kind of stayed with me. So I, my, I had a professor and they said, you know, your director can go out and shelve books on the shelves, but what do you have then? You have the most expensive shelver. And I think that's, I understand the point. But on the flip side of that, I think you need to know how your library runs from top to bottom. You need to know what the low people on the rung are doing. You need to know what their day to day is. You need to know what the middle, what the middle level people do. Mm -hmm. You, you got to know that. And, and so I think this idea of, of, well, you don't need to be out doing stuff like that. I'm like, you know, maybe you do. Maybe you need to learn. My, my, this previous, this bad boss, this, this last bad boss at the time, couldn't even check out books to patrons. They they were so isolated from the daily tasks of running the library. They couldn't even check out books to a patron. They had no clue how the ILS system run. Uh, we had bibliotics at the time, and it's not it's not too hard. But they had no clue how any of that ran, and, and they just were so separated from from the reality of the day to day of a library. It was it was kind of astonishing. And I do want to say this: doing the right things will sometimes cost you. I, I felt that I was trying to do the right thing. I felt that I was gathering evidence and I was going to, oh, Brooke's going to step in and, you know, I'm going to step in and expose evildoers. It cost me. It cost me a lot. Um, my work environment became very toxic, very bad. Um, I had, I, you know, I was, I was on the, I was on the receiving end of harassment. And, and I think the only saving grace is, is, I was doing my job to a T and I was documenting everything and they had nothing they could fire me on. And I think that's probably what kept me. I knew that if that director had stayed, they would have found something to fire me about. They ended up leaving. And so I still had my job, but, but I do want to say that sometimes doing the right things will cost you. And that's an ugly, harsh truth, but and it's you know, doing the right thing as far as your job and keeping the library running. I mean, you do feel, I think, you know, um not a responsibility but you know um it's your library and you want it to do well yeah you don't want to um destroy it because and by just letting things happen although sometimes that might be an answer you know what let the let the other people let the bad boss fail you know don't don't fix things for them or you know yeah. but that's a hard thing to balance too. And there's also doing the right thing, something that um, you've kind of alluded to, but is uh, self-care. You know, yeah. how much do I want to get involved in this? What can I handle right now? Um, I had a situation in the past where I was, I had an opportunity to um, ramp up an issue I had with a previous supervisor. Um, and I was asked by their supervisor, do you want to do, you know, this? And there was, and it was, it was um, 
not a good time for me to have all of that going on. It's just, this is a long, long time ago. This has nothing to do with COVID. So I'll tell you that yeah. a long, long time ago. Um, but, and I was like, yes, I want to, but I don't think my brain and my emotions and what I'm, what's happening right now in my own life, it's not the right time. Yeah. And I ended up still being in that horrible situation for a while longer. And in hindsight, I'm like, I wish I had had the confidence and the strength at that time to do it but I just didn't. I had to take care of myself and I let that person stay. I let them affect other people. Multiple people left the, the, the uh, who are supervised by this person because they were such a bad yeah. supervisor. And I was like, I wish I could have, but at that time it was just not. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's so hard too. It's hard to take that step back and say, you know, I need to do this. And it's, mm -hmm. it's gonna, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna be rough, but I need to do it. And, and that's hard too. And probably, yes, it, you know, honestly, I think there was a lot of, a lot of, and I'm sure this was, you had to weigh the morality, <laughs> weigh the morality of doing it. And, you know, at the time I'd felt like I was a, a friend with my boss. Mm -hmm. And, and so for my friend's sake, I was trying to stave off doing this and, and, and yeah, same thing. Like you, I, there was so much, there was so much mental anguish involved. It was, it was not great. And, and I know, like I said, people get into these situations and then they don't know what to do. And, and if I had gone to the board, I probably would have ended up fired after they had talked to, after the boss had talked to the board and it just was, it was a bad situation. And I, I was going through a lot of, I mean, there was, I was not taking care of myself in terms of mental health. Absolutely yeah. not because I was so keyed up on stress and, you know, trying mm -hmm. to take it to the library. And it was like, I, I, you know, my coworkers, the people who worked in my departments, I was trying to take care of them too. And it just, uh, yeah, like you said, you know, a lot of, a lot of bad stuff continued to happen because I did not pursue this. I did not pursue this issue the second I had a couple of things and could have done something about it. So. Well, that is it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's something that happens. That's a thing that I guess it was a long time ago. It's hard not to feel guilt about it forever. <laughs> um, yeah. But at that time, it was the way had, things had to go. And hopefully yeah. now in the future, um, I know for myself, I am in a much better situation now. Things did get better. I can say that. <laughs> um, yeah. They could have gotten better quicker, but you can only do what yeah. you can do. Don't yeah. feel guilty if you can't take on the enormity of something that is happening in the yes. management that is, um, yeah. And it's it's hard to work up the courage to, to go, you know, and get your evidence in line and start collecting that. And that's really hard. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you know, I've seen a lot of questions about this and, and I completely understand and commiserate with anyone who's trying to work up the courage. It, it's very difficult. And if you've done it, I tip my hat to you. <laughs> Well, we have someone who's coming saying to you, Brooke, you are very resilient. Thanks for that. <laughs> I, I hope so. I, you know, I, I look back now and I think, well, I, I learned a lot. It was a good learning situation. I took a lot from that. I took a lot, you know, and, and I do want to say this, like I said, the ultimate, the, the, the boss that ended, eventually ended up leaving, I, they had good, they had some good ideas. They had some good things. I, I think they weren't prepared for that situation. And I think that they let it get the better of them. And, and it, I wish they'd had some own self-recognition of like, Hey, this is not good for me. Or I need to, you know, <laughs> I need to yeah. reach help or get help or whatever. But that was not I what I handle this. And I, I need to admit that I can't handle this and I need, yeah. 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 And ultimately if that person had, and that was the other thing too, is probably if they had had an assistant director or had more managers, the load could have been lightened, but because they got rid of all of the, the managers, there was no one to help. So. That. Yeah, that's a lot for, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, here in Nebraska, we have many small staff libraries, but that's not the situation everywhere. So elsewhere it could be, yeah. Yeah, and this was, I mean, this is, it was unusual for that many people to be fired in such a short time. And this was yeah. on a staff, the staff and was not about- be just ultimately automatically replacing that same position. That's like, yeah, no, I mean, they, they paired, they it just managers would go and they would get paired. It would get paired down to the existing managers. And then, like I said, ultimately I was the only one standing and I just kind of thought, Oh no, <laughs> like where'd everyone go? 
<laughs> goodness. Yeah. Uh, so, as, as Brooke says here, anybody have any questions? Nobody um, said anything during your presentation. That's fine. Um, does anybody have any questions, comments, thoughts, suggestions you want to make? Go ahead and type into the questions section. Uh, we do have some thank yous coming on for um, coming through for this presentation. This is great. Um, uh, uh, good to hear that uh, we're not alone in these situations. If people are having this, that this is the kind of thing that can be out there. Um, and you know figure out a way to to deal with it and i think there's some good tips and good i think um you gave a lot of good um warning signs you know yeah. uh, look for these early warning signs of something that might be worse and see if maybe you can head it off or yeah. work with the people this the bad uh, managers a little better before things get um totally off the rails well and, and it really is one of those things you know, look look in your HR manual or your personnel manual, know how your complaint procedures run, know the avenues which, which you can take. If you're a city department, you know, know how that functions. Just, mm -hmm. you know, be, and I'm, I'm sure if you have an HR person, you could probably shoot them questions and get little tentative answers before you, <laughs> before you go, you know, full, like, aha, I've got all these things, but. Yeah, yeah. You know, just, you know, and, and educate yourself on, you know, anytime yeah. you have a job, what if something does, I'm not saying it will, I'm not coming into this position saying, okay, I'm here to figure out who's doing something bad. It's yeah. just, you should know everything's a bit, you know, what it is. There should be an employee handbook or a, if you are employees of the city, a city employee handbook or um, documents that you can just get access to without having to like, like if you do ask a question of HR, well, I think you're going to be wanting to do something. It's like, no, I just want to know where I find this info just in case before something comes up. I don't want to be flailing around and thinking I don't have any um, anything that I can do about it. Yeah. No, it's it's a tough situation. And this library, you wanted it to succeed. And it just, it was kind of just like limping along. And, you know, it's it, it takes more than one person to fix something too. I, and let that be said. I mean, it would have at that at that point, it would have taken a team and unfortunately that was not the environment under which it was currently in <laughs> well i'm glad you're here in um at, at blair now with us brooke i think things are going there you've been there since <clears throat> what uh 2000 sometime yeah 2020. 2020. COVID, october of 2020 is so i was like i was i'm apparently i'm known around the the city as the co the COVID interview i was like thanks <laughs> Let's say I remember that it was like a new director in the very beginnings of COVID. It's like, oh my gosh, this is like getting hired and moving to jobs. Cool. It, um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> all right. Well, it doesn't look like any questions came in, any urgent questions right now. That's perfectly fine. Um, you all have this recording later to refer to, and uh, Brooke will send me her slides as well. Yes. Um, and if you do want to reach out to her, possibly privately, to have any sort of conversations, uh, you know. Blair Public Library and Technology Center. You can find her online there very easily. Yes, me. Um, oh, oh, we do. Oh, we have comments coming in. Great. Thank you so much. It says, thank you for sharing your story. This was helpful for someone dealing with management. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah. No, and and anyone who's dealing with it now, I, I you know, I do wish you the best of luck, and I do hope things work out for you. It's it's tough, and I've been there. I mean, just know mm -hmm. others have been there, it, it, but it is very frustrating. I, you've been through, as, as the person said, you've been such a, I think, a perfect storm of just people who are bad at their job, people who are indifferent of their job, uh, oh, going up the chain. I mean, that kind of thing is like. A lot. I mean, you, just, it, you know, typically it may be just a single person you're trying to figure out and deal with, but having this whole chain that you did was just like, woof. <laughs> yeah, and, and that was, I think that was hopefully out of the ordinary. <laughs> I know, and and and, but the good news is, is I get to share it. I get to share it with everybody. But really? yeah, it was, it was just kind of like, oh no, this goes all the way up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm glad you came out of it and you're still here with um That's in libraries. Me, it didn't so. chase you out of libraries. That's the part that I would be most <laughs> <laughs> worried about. All right. All right. So I am gonna pull presenter control back to my screen to wrap things up for today. Um thanks so much, Brooke. This was great. I was glad I get to have you on the show. Um as she mentioned at the beginning, um this was a session done at our NLA conference for you, not in Nebraska, this is our Nebraska Library Association annual conference. Last month? When was it? 
Uh, time goes by so weirdly now. <laughs> Still, <I know>. Christmas <laughs> is almost here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, and so I, I had asked her to come on and share with more people here on our show. So I'm glad we were able to have you. And um, this is great information. I think it'll help a lot of people. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Brooke. So um, that will wrap it up for our show. As I said, we have um, our recording and our archives are right here. This is our main page. Um, if you just uh, use your search engine of choice and look up Encompass Live, we're the only thing called that on the internet at the moment. Nobody else is allowed to use that name. <laughs> um, but right here is our archives, right underneath our upcoming shows. Um, most recent one will be at the top here. So um, by the end of the day, tomorrow at the latest, uh, the recording should be up um, here. Uh, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, even if you weren't able to show up live, you'll get an email from me letting you know that it's up. Uh, we also push out into our, we have a mailing list in Nebraska. We have a Facebook page, which is linked from everywhere. Here's our, um, Facebook page. If you like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. You see, we have reminders about logging in today's show, our um, meet our presenters, and then we do post when the recordings are available as well. Uh, you can also uh, on Twitter and I think Instagram is the other thing we're using. NCUP Live is the hashtag for the show, so you can keep an eye on things we're doing over there. Um, in our archives here, while I'm here, I'll show you, we do have a search feature. If you want to search for a particular topic to see if you've, we've done something on it, you can. Um, you can limit to just the most recent 12 months if you want something just current or our full show archives. And that is because, um, and I'm, let's see, I'll do this. Close your eyes. Near. This goes back to when Encompass Live first premiered, which was in January 2009. And we do have all of our show archives here. As long as we have a place to host them, they'll always be up. Um, but some of our older things, of course, um, some shows will stand the test of time. Some things will become old or outdated, and the information will be no longer good anymore. Um, resources and services may have changed drastically or have disappeared completely. Staff may be at different libraries. <laughs> now who have presented so just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything you watch on our archives so they're all dated here so you'll know when it actually um was originally presented um so next week uh our topic will be our best new children's books of 2022 um sally snyder who's our library commission coordinator of children and young adult library services will do talk about all the best books um for preschool through elementary school that she read this past year um and if you notice here we also have a best new teen reads coming up she does these kind of two companion shows uh, on children's books and then on january 11th we already got our 2023 dates coming up uh she'll come back to talk about teen reads the best new teen reads that she read in 2022 so if you're looking for those two shows, um, sign up for either of those. Um, while we're here too, I just wanna give a plug for something else we do online. We do this weekly show, Encompass Live, but we also host the Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference, which is where um, for small libraries to present about things they're doing. And for us here in Nebraska and for this conference, we consider small libraries as libraries with a uh, population served or FTE of 10,000 or less. So all of our presenters are from libraries who have 10,000 or less people they serve, whether it's public, academic, school, whatever. And the call for speakers is now open. Uh, so please, if you are a small library and you'd like to present, this is, um, um, please submit a proposal. If you know any small libraries you think would be good, share the news, spread, spread the word. This is a national conference we do with people attend and present from all over the country. Um, the deadline to submit proposals is December 16th, 2022. If you want to know what's been done previously, if you're interested, we do have all of our previous conferences listed here in our archives on this. Our first one was in 2012. So um, please do uh, sign up to do a proposal or spread the word for us. Other than that, that, that wraps up for today. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Brooke, for being with us again. Um, she was in, has done a previous show for us. So, um, and hopefully we'll see you all on a future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>